All right. So, how's everybody doing? Good. Yeah, good. I feel the excitement. I haven't had a chance to really hang out aside from, you know, our Christmas party where everybody was all over the place eating, 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 eating. If any of you are like me, you've noticed your clothes don't fit anymore after the holidays. <laughs> Just me? Oh, I guess I ate all the food at that <laughs> event. But again, guys, welcome, welcome, welcome. So nice to see you in the new year. How many of you were at the 90 Day Blitz by a show of hands last week? All right, good portion of you. Was that an exciting meeting? Yeah. You guys get a lot out of it? Yeah. I mean, guys, as you know, 2018, it's here, it's arrived. It's amazing how time flies by. One thing you can never stop is what? Time, time right? The other thing is, unfortunately, taxes. But we'll talk about that. <laughs> And, you know, then there's, there's death, right, which is just gruesome. We don't want to talk about that. Let's keep it uplifting in 2018, right? But at the end of the day, we want to make sure we understand that we're getting the most out of our time. So for some of you, you may have seen this program that I go through. And, I mean, why we're going through it again is, is it fair to say that sometimes we sit through something or we've gone through a seminar or, you know, we watch it again and we realize that we were in a different space the first time we saw it than we were the second time and realize that we got something different out of it the second time than we did the first. Is that fair? I've I always learned that repetition is something that's extremely important because again, life brings you all kinds of different changes, right? So at the end of the day, you might sit through a program 50 t different times and realize you get something different out of it every single time that you're there. But what's also important is you're reinforcing the things that you know. Would you agree that becoming a professional requires you to become very proficient at what you do? Yes or yes? yes. Well, so that means we need to repeat, repeat, repeat over and over and over again in order to become better at what we do. I'm sure for those of you that were in the meeting with Ray last week, you heard him say that boring makes you money, right? Now, of course, we don't want to have a boring life, but what we mean by that is that sometimes we're engaged in the same activities and we might be like, oh my goodness, it seems like I'm doing the same thing. But the good thing about what we do is even if you're engaged in the same activity, what's our inventory? Who are we in front of at all times? People. And is everyone the same? No, which means that even though the situation might be similar in activity, the result is usually different. The conversation is different. There's all kinds of different aspects to what we do, which keeps it encouraging, keeps it exciting, and all of that. So as we come into 2018, we want to make sure that we understand how to get the most out of our year. And that's a matter of making sure we're focused, we understand exactly what to do, how to plan, how to act, how to go about what we're doing in the best possible way, and get the most out of what we're doing from this point forward, especially if we're going to launch a 90-day blitz and try to get the most out of the next 90 days, right? Momentum is an interesting thing, and I'm sure one of the slides you saw Jerome do was talking about the airplane, right? Well, really, it's the rocket ship is what we're talking about. There's 85% of the fuel is completely exhausted upon takeoff of a rocket ship. So you see that big cloud, and you see all that fire, and you see all that bright light and all of that to get that rocket off the ground. That's because it requires a significant amount of force to make it get going, right? Once it's going, now there's only 15% of the fuel left to take it the rest of the way. But eventually when it gets where it needs to go, it starts to hit orbit and starts to go to the destination it needs to be at. However, you need to understand that when people are in space, do they just turn off the engines now and float around and hopefully get to their destination? Or do they have to hit their thrusters from time to time to keep them on course? That's the interesting thing about momentum. Okay, is that yes, a significant amount of energy needs to be given at the very front end to get it going, but then you need to make sure you're consistently giving energy off to keep you on the straight and narrow. Otherwise, you end up in, uh, on Jupiter instead of getting to perhaps Mars. Does that make sense? Nobody wants to be in Jupiter. It seems like it's really far away and really cold and lonely. I don't like being lonely. <laughs> Anyways. All right, guys. So again, I want to welcome you here. And uh, you heard Angie say it. I mean, we had a phenomenal 2017. And guys, I, I can't say enough about everything that you've done in this room. I mean, absolutely amazing. You guys finished up at close to, uh, I think, just shy of $2 million in production in your very, very first year. So give yourselves a round of applause. <laughs> Absolutely phenomenal. I mean, I can't wait to see what 2018 brings because based on the trajectory of this organization, I see you more than doubling. I see you guys going for $5 million, $6 million worth of production. And it's not just about the numbers, but we know when we extrapolate that number what that means and the difference that we're making, don't we? Again, if you sit back and say that the average policyholder takes, I don't know, $1,000 worth of APV to protect themselves or their family, well, if you talk about $6 million worth of volume, what's $6 million divided by 1000 Does anybody know? 60, is, it, is that the number? 60000 You are allowed to take out a calculator if you need to. <laughs> it's okay. This is, this is a math class. No, we're not going to fail you. 60000 so That would be 60,000 people your organization alone would have an opportunity and influence to protect, to be there for in a difficult time. Does that seem like a cause worth going out and engaging in some no's to be able to be a part of? Yes. 
Jennifer, say it loud. Yes. There we go. See, that's what I love. See, she's tiny but vicious. I love it. Okay. All right. So, guys, as we go through today, I want to make sure that we kind of focus in on a lot of the things that we want to engage in. It's going to move at a relatively fast pace. There's some elements in what I'm going to talk about today that we did in the cold prospecting workshop. But again, repetition is important to be able to keep it in front of you at all times. I also want to talk a little bit about... Um, uh, identity and unity and all of the wonderful things that come along with that. Uh, you've heard kind of from time to time this Spartans thing getting thrown around and that's because at the beginning of this year with the success that we had our organization was a big part of the company but a bit divided when it came to how it was all structured. What I mean by that is that as the year began, just to give you a little history, uh, I started off as a regional manager in British Columbia, and that was technically what the Thunderbirds region was called. Uh, the Saskatchewan organization that we were a part of was called the Prairie Flyers region, so that's what it was named. The organization you guys are a part of was once a part of the Western Warriors, got moved into the Thunderbirds, so there was this kind of lack of identity, whether you talked about it or didn't talk about it. Does that make sense? So even though we're all contributing to the same cause, perfect example is Saskatchewan, who's a part of our organization, would still be labeled as a Prairie Flyers team, not, let's say, a Thunderbirds team. So even though we're one team, there was still this division from time to time, and I didn't like that. I mean, I think that unity eliminates insecurity, and the larger we get, the more unified we need to become in order to succeed. So what they allowed us an opportunity to do was amalgamate everything together, rebrand, rename ourselves, and move forward. And that's what this Spartans region is. Basically, the Spartans region is now the amalgamation of everything that once was as something brand new that we can continue to move forward. And I think that's exciting because when you think about it, you don't want to be labeled as what was. You want to be labeled as what's new and moving forward. Wouldn't you agree? And that's what we are. Moving into 2018, we're a brand new region. Our organization, as you know, stems from British Columbia to Alberta to Saskatchewan to Manitoba. We're starting our expansion into Ontario and various other places. And it's an exciting place to be. Now, you might say, why would we pick the Spartans region out of everything? I don't know how many of you have been involved in history or, for that matter, have seen any of the movies out there like 300 or anything like this. But the Spartans were one of the, the I guess, most feared armies in, in ancient Greece, Greek history. And I just look at it like you guys are out there you're warriors would you say you're warriors yeah. every single day you go out there you have a never give up never surrender mentality and that's what I felt needed to be exuded by our team our team is going to stand strong It's going to go out there and make sure that we never we never back away from a challenge that we always press forward that we unify shoulder to shoulder to make sure that we pick each other up instead of leave someone behind that we're always out there trying to make sure that we can make a difference in our numbers and everything that we want to do because we are game changers would we agree that's what that stems for, is a matter of being able to go out there, be ready for battle, never give up, never surrender, always keep moving forward. Now, the identities that we have, TTO, that's a part of our identity. Each one of our districts, we want to have identities within our identity, but we want to talk from a larger point of view on what is possible and where we're going. I didn't get a lot, a lot of time to really share the specific numbers with you on what 2017 meant as a region for us. But we did over $8.8 .8 million in production last year in our region, which is a 70% increase year over year, grew our organization from 204 licensed available people to 386 with 90 more that are excited and ready to come into the field over the course of the next month and a half. Do you see growth right now in our organization? Yes. That is all a matter, again, of your hard work, your discipline, your patience, your perseverance in the, in the eye of, uh, of difficulty. So again, give yourselves a round of applause. I hope you know how grateful I am to be a business partner with you and how excited I am about us moving forward into 2018. And I will talk a little bit at the very end about what the vision for this year is, but let's jump into the nitty gritty and get things going. Um, can you guys see this okay? It kind of, can you, hang on, just let me just flip the lights a little bit. Tell me when it's the best for you to read. Hang on one second here, Roxanne thinks. Is that okay? Or, hang on, just make it pitch black in here? What if I go like that? Is that better? Is that the best? Yeah? Okay. It's kind of pointless if I'm like, yeah, I'm talking about I can't see what you're talking about, Mike. <laughs> All right. So at the end of the day, I guess the, the statement that is going to be made here is success isn't always easy. Or sorry, sales isn't always easy, especially when it comes to hearing a lot of no's, getting negativity, and everything like that. Would we agree? Yeah. It is worth it, though, at the end of the day. Would we also agree to that? So at the end of the day, we have to understand that the attributes, qualities learned by successful people aren't something that they're born with. They're things that are developed over time, okay? And I'm not going to read this stuff verbatim, verbatim. Basically, you'll see through practice, repetition, hard work, somebody becomes successful. So if you're willing to make sure that you go out there and you practice, 
you're willing to go out there and repeat those steps over and over again, and you're willing to work hard, things will happen. If I were to tell you right now that if you wanted to have the best week ever, okay, out of curiosity, how many of you in the room would want to have the best week you've ever had in business? Yeah. By show of hands. Woo. Can I share a seven step formula for you? Yeah. You guys ready? Yeah. Okay. You might want to write this down. It's very important. If you want to be committed to having the best week you've ever had, step number one, go to work on Monday. You guys ready? Okay. Step number two, go to work on Tuesday. <laughs> Step number three, go to work on Wednesday. Step number four, go to work on Thursday. Step five, did I lose somebody? Let me start again. Step number one. But do you get it? Yeah. Now again, I'm not here to say that I'm cracking a whip and all of you better be lined up and ready to go. But what I am saying is that practice repetition hard work. If you want to change your circumstances, you've got to be willing to put in the what? Time, effort, work, whatever it might be. That's where success comes from. Success doesn't show up to the person that's sitting around saying, I'm going to succeed today, I'm going to succeed today, I'm going to succeed today. I'm going to succeed. What's on Netflix? I'm going to succeed today, I'm going to succeed. It doesn't work that way. It's the person that goes out and that engages in the activity, that gets their hands dirty, that makes it happen. Now, does every single week need to be a seven-day all-out battle? No, it's about understanding how to calendarize, how to get balance to get the most out of what you do. Is that fair? So again, when we go through it, you have to understand skills, qualities, they can be taught. However, a person has to take responsibility for where they are today and where it is they want to be. Is that a fair statement? You've got to take that responsibility. It's our responsibility to go out there to make a difference. It's a rare day that someone wakes up and says, you know what, I'm going to buy some insurance today. And even if they did, chances are, five minutes later, they get a phone call or their kids are running around the house and what did they forget? They were going to buy insurance today. Does that make sense? So again, it's our responsibility to go out there and be those edge minimum. Would we not agree that the world would be a better place if people didn't end up getting hurt or sick and finding out too late that what they had wasn't enough? Would we not agree? How many people are right now in financial burden as a result of finding out the hard way? We were talking to a guy that deals in um, debt consolidation and bankruptcies and stuff. Do you know he said it was something around, and please don't quote me because I don't know the exact number, but a good portion of like 50 to 70% of what he does is a, is a direct result of someone getting hurt or sick. Sitting down with people and having to figure out how to consolidate their debt, go bankrupt, do whatever they need to do to get through that difficult time. 50 to 70% of his clients got hurt or sick and that's why they're where they're at. Isn't that crazy? And do we have the solution? Yeah, now is everyone gonna listen to us? No. There's some stubborn people out there, right? That Jennifer, she's stubborn, we know, okay? But at the end of the day, we have to continue to press forward because how do you make a difference in the world? Think about it. Do you go out with the intention of changing the entire world? You wake up this morning, Randy, and you go, hey, listen, I'm gonna change the world today. So what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna start a satellite broadcast from space and everyone, I'm gonna interfere with whatever they're doing and I'm gonna say, we're changing the world today. And everyone just changes the world, does it happen that way? No, how do you change the world? One by one, one, by, one by one, by one, by one. You gotta go out there and you gotta make a difference one step at a time and then another step at a time. And what happens is, as you have the opportunity to make a difference for one person, that person can make a difference for another person, and so on and so forth, which leads us to understanding why we do what we do, whether it be from protecting people and their financial strain, or coming from offering them an opportunity to go out there and protect people for their financial strain. Make sense? Yes. Uh, make sense? Yes. Oh, that's a better response. Okay, so how do we get better and how do we become a professional in the field that we're in? So, the questions you want to be asking yourself on a regular basis are, are you challenging yourself to be your very best? Are you holding yourself accountable to a higher standard? And what is your commitment level to living your dreams? These are important questions, and who do you have to ask them to? Yourself. You want to know the great thing about having a conversation with yourself? Hopefully, you're always available. If you're not, then, well, that's a different problem entirely. Make sense? So you need to make sure that you're honest with yourself and asking yourself these questions. At the end of the day, did you give your very, very best today? And again, if you don't have a dedicated plan to be able to follow, really, how are you in a position where you can assess whether you gave your best or not? And that's where it really comes down to, is having that plan, right? Are you holding yourself accountable to a higher standard? And lastly, what is your commitment level to living your dreams? How many of you have bigger dreams in your mind for what you, your family, and your life is going to look like than what you have right now in this moment? So the question is, are you doing anything differently to make sure that those dreams can come to fruition? Does that make sense? Okay. 
So it all comes down to your choices. There are three areas that you and only you are responsible for. We call it the app theory. The first one is your activities and your action. The second one is your attitude in any given situation and that attitude should always be what? Positive. And the last one is product knowledge. Understanding what you're talking about, okay? Understanding that this app theory will allow you to become more successful is your first step in taking that responsibility and being able to move forward with what it is you want to do. Make sense? Yes. We all good? I see cameras coming out. Three, two, Lee J. All right. All right, cool. So let's start with activities and actions, okay? What's important to understand is engaging in the right activities can help you maximize your time, but the biggest key is engaging in successful activities. We sometimes distort or water down what the actual situation is. Perfect example. Let's say you had allocated time to go out and build prospecting through B2B for that day, okay? So let's say Carla decides, okay, I'm gonna go out, I'm gonna do B2B today, and uh, instead of just stopping and going, drives around all day long to figure out where the best place to start would be. So now, four hours of driving around, figures out, oh, you know what, there's six places that I can start tomorrow, but what's happened as a result of that activity? Wasted the entire day. Wouldn't it have been better to have identified one stop and started? Because what's our inventory? People. And driving around by yourself, giving your sales kit or your iPad a nice, you know, walk through in the streets of Calgary isn't going to make you money, right or wrong. It also isn't going to make a difference, right or wrong. Okay, so we need to make sure that we're being honest to ourselves. Same thing. Let's say you're going to start working your warm market or you've got a bunch of referrals. But there's some people that are a higher caliber. And I'm not saying a higher caliber than you. I'm just saying they're a higher caliber person. They run a business or they're, and they're on what we call your chicken list. You know, you get a little bit of fear before you want to pick up that phone and say, hey, Lee J, how you doing? You managed business for 20 years. You've been highly successful. Who am I? I'm scared. And instead, what you start to do now is you know that during the course of the day, they're probably what? Busy. So when do you try to call them? During the day, because you know they probably won't what? Answer. But you tell yourself, I'm engaged in what? The activity. And again, if the shoe fits where, it, all I'm doing is making you self-aware of some of the things that we do from time to time, because what we're doing is hindering our own success. We make a call at a time when we know there's a high probability that they won't answer, so we can tell ourselves or trick ourselves that we did the activity, <laughs> as opposed to pick up the phone when we know the person would be around at eight o'clock at night when they're done what they're doing. Hey, Lee J, how's it going? It's Mike calling. I'm absolutely, in my own mind, petrified of talking to you, but there's a better chance of me sitting down with you actually on the phone with you than there is getting your voicemail 36 times during the week because I always call at 11.35. Make sense? Again, I'm just trying to make it clear that we want to make sure that the activities we've scheduled for ourselves are actionable to an outcome. We're not lying to ourselves or hindering our own success. You want to know what the biggest building block you will have in your entire career is? What do you think it is? Yourself. Period. You will be the biggest building block in your entire career. It's a matter of, again, your choices, your decisions, and being able to master that thing called fear. We break fear down, right? Face everything and rise or forget everything and run. I don't know, whatever it might be. It's a matter of perspective. So keep track of your daily activities using tools like daily activity trackers. It helps you illustrate exactly what's going on in every aspect of what you do. Perfect example, if you're doing a lot of business to business. It's important for you to track how many businesses you walked into, introduced yourself, presented at, had follow-ups, and made sales on. Why? Because if you're going to sit back and don't have any appointments, but your objective that week was to make a difference for your family by selling 3,000 in volume that week because you've got a credit card bill around the corner, well, you need to know what those numbers are going to look like for you to be able to get in front of enough people to solidify 3,000 in volume. What do I mean by that? Well, let's say the average application you market is $500 in APV. You want to do 3,000, which means how many people would you need to market to that week? Six. Well, if your numbers show that you need to talk to 20 businesses in order to give 10 presentations, when you give 10 presentations, usually five people are interested. When five people are interested, you usually get two appointments. And when you have two appointments, you close one. Well, if you need six, that means you gotta take that and multiply it all by six. So you better not just go to 20 businesses, you need to go to 120 businesses. Does that make sense? But if you're just gonna say, well, I'll just go out there and do the 20, 3,000 will happen. All you're doing is what? building that block in front of yourself again. 
So you want to track where you're at. Same thing with making calls, understanding how things work in your warm market. How many calls do you make where people answer? How many of those people give you the time of day to sit with them? How many of those people do you have an opportunity to present to? And how many of those lead to closing a sale? Important for you to track that information. Also, how many referrals do you typically get from each aspect of what you do so that you can build that into your repertoire and start to track what, you, what you've got going on? Does this make sense? But again, no one can track it for you because who's the one engaged in the activity? You are, right? So you gotta take that responsibility. Uh, it's no secret that the most successful people are the most consistent out there. They're the ones that understand what they've gotta do. And you know what? One of the key things to understanding about being in business on your own, and again, I do not begrudge anybody for taking time to be with their family, enjoying the holidays, doing all of that, but I am going to share a secret with you guys as we move into 2018 for all of the holidays that you have coming up. Understand that, again, your business is built on momentum, right? So planning effectively is so crucial to what you do. As an example, in the summertime, it might make a lot of sense to take a three-week vacation. That would be fantastic. But I want you to think about this for a moment. If your activity is getting in front of people to be able to book appointments, to be able to close sales and get referrals, and you spend three entire weeks without getting in front of anybody, what happens to your business? What happens to your pipeline? Dry. It becomes dry. So now you've gone three weeks, and when you're not marketing or closing, what aren't you making? Money. I mean, I'm being very blunt. I don't want to paint this, no, everything's fine, unicorns, rainbows. No, I, I want to be blunt. I want to make sure it's clear, right? So you go these three weeks, you don't earn an income. Then you come back. Now, when you come back, if you've got a dry pipeline after three weeks of inactivity, does that mean that people just show up and are ready to go the following week? No. What do you now have to start doing again? Prospecting. prospecting. So can, if you just start prospecting on day one, does everything come together for you? No. What do you have to build back up again? A pipeline. So here's what happens to most people. And I'm not saying all people, but a good portion of people, not most either, a good portion of people. They do this thinking, okay, I've earned this vacation and rightfully so they've earned that vacation. They should take it. But planning effectively as a business owner is different than working at a job. Remember this? So they take the three weeks, they come back. Now they're flat footed and they go out and try to prospect. They go a full week prospecting, start to generate some activity, but it's not leading them to an immediate sale. They go out another week prospecting, trying to generate activity, doesn't lead to immediate sale. So three weeks of fun, which when you're on holidays, do you guys make money or lose money? Yeah, because what are you doing when you're on holidays? Spending, right? It's not free. You go on vacation, it's like, well, thank you so much for this free massage. I didn't know how it was happening, but it just, you showed up and it was free. And I was like, okay, cool. No, that'd be really weird. I don't know if I'd accept that massage if somebody just showed up. Hey, Randy, I'm here to give you a free massage. Would you take it? Okay. <laughs> Stuff's going to get weird. Let's go, buddy. <laughs> but do you see what I'm saying? So you spend money. So now you've gone three weeks with no income. You've spent money, which means chances are you're now falling behind a little bit. Now you go two weeks to try to generate activity, which means you're out there, you're working hard, you're trying to stay motivated. But what now has happened? You've gone five weeks, no income. You're tired after two weeks of hard work pushing, and you've got bills to pay from the three weeks you enjoyed. Many of you are now leaving the business. Many of you are now leaving the business because what you're sitting back saying is I can't financially afford to do this any longer. I got to do something different. Does that make sense? Now, why am I telling you this now? Because I want you to know as a business person that planning is so important. In fact, in the summertime, it might be more effective for you to only work three full days a week, every week in summer, and have a four day extended vacation every week than it would be for you to take three weeks off over that entire three months. 